Experiment E6 involves a number of different types of electrical measurements using some different types of electrical devices. We have two different types of power supplies here. This one is a regulated power supply, which means its voltage output is constant regardless of how much resistance you attach to it. This one is a non-regulated power supply and it behaves as if it were a voltage in series with a resistance. So the more current you draw, the more the voltage is lost to the internal resistance. And we're going to try to determine the value of that internal resistance for this power supply. The meters we'll be using, we have an analog meter here, which is sort of like a little electric motor that moves a needle uh, and is quite useful in a number of situations. We have two different digital meters here, a handheld meter and a bench meter. And as you saw, in experiment E2, if you did it first, there are different inputs to these meters. On this meter, we have this input for voltage and resistance measurements, and these inputs for current. Same thing here. This input for voltage and resistance. These inputs for current. On the analog, the inputs are down here. The one that says common negative is the ground, and the one that says V omega A is for volts, ohms, and current, amperes. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is use this analog ohm meter for some measurements. For quantitative measurements, generally the digitals are a little more accurate. But for simple types of testing, uh, the analog is handier because you can watch the needle move and you can learn some things from that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set this on one of the scales used for measuring ohms, that is resistance. I'll set it on this times 1K. Now, this red scale across the top is the ohm scale. It's the only one that goes backwards because the more current flows from the battery inside this ohm meter, then the lower the resistance of the thing we're testing. So, zero's over at this end, where it's normally over at this end. Now, to calibrate the meter, because the batteries stay in here for a long time, I'll take the two probes and I'll hold them together. And I'll use this adjustment to set the scale at zero. So the ohm meter thinks that the probes have zero resistance. Here's, for example, a 100 ohm resistor. And if I probe it, I get a reading of about 0.1 on the scale, and that's because I'm multiplying by a thousand. So 0.1 times a thousand. This is about a hundred. Normally, what you use these things for is looking for discontinuities. Uh, for example, on this little circuit board here, I have several electrical components. This is a fuse and uh, some of them, the one at your station, may be blown. Let's see if this one is. I'll probe it. Nope, the needle moves. This fuse has low resistance, so this fuse is good. This is a one ohm resistor, so at this scale it's pretty much going to look like it doesn't have any resistance. Now these two components here are LEDs, light emitting diodes. There's a white one and a red one, and they have a kind of an interesting property. Let's probe the white one. 
and I'm seeing about 1,000 ohms. But if I probe it in the other direction, I'm seeing about 2,000 ohms, which means current doesn't flow through this thing the same in both directions. That's why they're called semiconductors. Now this red LED here, let's check it. I probe it this way, nothing happens. It shows infinite resistance. Well, it's a semiconductor after all. So let's probe it the other way, and it still shows infinite resistance, which means this semiconductor is blown. It is non-conducting right now. So we'd have to replace that one. All right, this last little thing, this looks like a little metal can here, is a capacitor. And sometimes capacitors have residual charge on them, so just to make sure I don't get zapped, I'm going to discharge that with a wire. All right, now, watch the needle closely. When I probe this capacitor, the needle jumped and then it dropped back to show infinite resistance. What really that means is that current flowed through the capacitor for a short time and then stopped. And of course, that means we charged up the capacitor. If I probe it again, nothing happens because the capacitor has a charge on it. If I discharge it, and probe it again. Now the same thing happens as before. If I leave it charged and reverse the polarity and probe it, the needle jumps about twice as far because the capacitor first has to discharge and then charge up with the opposite polarity. So more charge flows. Okay, so Analog ohm meters are really useful for looking at gross characteristics of circuit uh, elements. Now, let's look at the digital meter. And I'm going to be using the digital meter to measure ohms. And this is the input for resistance measurement here. on and I'm going to select the ohm scale. Okay, right now this is flashing indicating infinite resistance because there is no conducting path between the two probes. If I put the two probes together it's showing a fraction of an ohm resistance for these wires. Now, let's take a look at a couple of these carbon resistors here. Here's one. You'll want to look at the color code in, in E0 in your lab manual. Uh, these are color coded with these rings. And starting with the ring closest to the edge of the resistor, this one is brown, black, brown, silver. The first two give the significant figures of the resistance. Brown is 1, black is 0, so that's 10. The third one is the power of 10 multiplier. That's brown. 10 to the first power is 10. So we have 10 times 10, or 100 ohms. This last one is the tolerance, the manufacturer's tolerance. This is a gold ring meaning when this resistor was manufactured, it was within 5% of the 100 ohm rating. Now let's probe it with the ohm meter and see what we get. Well, the ohm meter says 105.2 ohms. So this is just barely within, maybe even a little outside that 5% tolerance. Here's one, a little bit more colorful. This one is brown, black, red, silver. 
again, brown and black is 1 and 0, so that's 10. Red is 2 in the color code, so 10 to the second power is 100. So we have 10 times 100, so this is a 1,000 or 1 kilo ohm resistor with a silver tolerance band, which means 10%. So when this was manufactured, it was within 10% of 1,000 ohms. And if we probe it, uh, we're getting about 966 ohms for this one. So it's 10% uh, of 1,000 would be 100, and it's within 100 ohms. So this one is within the specifications. Now, <clears throat> We'd like to measure the resistance of this power supply. Um, and you can't use an ohm meter for that. Ohm meters have to have their own batteries in order to work. And so if you try to probe something that has voltage of its own, it's, if it doesn't damage the ohm meter, it's going to confuse the heck out of it. So. We have to come up with a different way of figuring out what the internal resistance of this power supply is. And the way we do it, let's switch this over to measure voltage. Okay, and I'll use two decimal point range. Now, let me turn on this power supply, and I'm going to measure the voltage output of this supply. So there's the output, there's the ground, and I'm getting about 12 volts for the output of this thing. Remember, voltmeters have very high resistance, so I'm not really drawing any current out of the power supply to speak of with the voltmeter. However, if I take one of these resistors, let's say this 1000 ohm resistor, and I connect that to the power supply. Now I'm going to be drawing some current. Now let's measure the output of the power supply. It's only about seven and a half volts. If I draw more current by using, say, this 100 ohm resistor instead of the 1000 ohm resistor, now I'm only getting about 2 volts out of my power supply. This is a common indication of internal resistance in a source. What we can do uh, we'll use the known value of this resistance and this voltage to determine the amount of current that's being drawn out of the power supply and the difference between the voltage we have here and the voltage when there was no load is the amount of voltage lost across the internal resistance. And you can then calculate the internal resistance from the equations here in the write-up. That's here on page two. Uh, another thing that is of considerable interest and utility in electrical measurements is tracing down discontinuities in circuits. Again, this is a situation in a live circuit where you do not want to use an ohm meter. You put an ohm meter into a circuit it can be confused or damaged by the other voltages in the circuit. And in a lot of cases, you do not want to take the circuit apart to use an ohm meter to look for discontinuities in the individual parts of the circuit. The circuit may be soldered together, for example. So here's a little series circuit coming from the 5 volt output here, through this resistor, through this resistor, through this resistor and back to the power supply. And I have, let's check and make sure now that our power supply is working. 
All right, the voltmeter is set up to measure voltage. So let me check the output here. I've got about 4.97 volts. So let's see what we have across each of these resistors. I have nothing across that resistor. I have nothing across that resistor. I have nothing across that resistor. So there's no current in this circuit. V is equal to I times R, and if I is zero, then there won't be any voltage. So someplace in this circuit, there's a discontinuity, and I would like to find it. Now, it may be a bad wire, it may be a bad connection between a binding post and a resistor lead. It might be a bad resistor. So we want to test that. Now, if we wanted to take this whole circuit apart, we could use an ohm meter to measure the individual pieces. But a lot of times circuits are complicated, they're soldered together, you don't want to take them apart. So in that case, you make use of the fact that wires and low resistance connections can always be regarded as if they were equipotentials, just like in the experiment ES1. So, I'll set this up to measure voltage, and what I want to do is look for something that should be an equipotential, but is not. So, I'll put my black probe here on the ground end of the circuit. Here, we have five volts. The other end of this wire, we have five volts. Here we have five volts, five volts, five volts, five volts, five volts, five volts, zero. This wire is bad. Now, we're out of voltage, so is there any way we can test the rest of the circuit without fixing this wire? And the answer is yes, very simple. I just put the red probe over here and start around the circuit from this side with the black probe. I touch it right there, I get five volts on the meter. I come to this end of that black wire and I still have five volts. I have five volts there, five volts there, five volts here, I get to the other end of this wire and I have zero. So it's telling me the same thing I found out going the other way, this wire is bad. And that's basically the secret of troubleshooting circuits. You look for things that should be equipotentials that are not.